Have you ever tried to make a dish and then realized you don't have all the ingredients? Yeah, you could run to the market, or you could learn to become a master of stylish substitution and make something tasty from ingredients you already have in your pantry. Pair this kind of food with good wine, and what you have is a family meal. Welcome to Family Meal, experimental home cooking for the 21st century. Each month I show you how to prepare a delectable feast with wine pairings. Then you get to watch as my friends tell me what they think about it all. This month we're all in lockdown here in California, so I made care packages and did a contactless drop-off at my friends' houses. Then we got together on Zoom to eat and drink and talk, but it still was a good time. Family Meal is about exploring food from different places and different times to understand how people make awesome food for the time and place they live in. Last month, we looked at the Mother Waddles cookbook, published in 1970 in Detroit. She was cooking for every person, the poor, the rich, for foodies, and for people who were just interested in a hot meal. Even though simple, she made dishes that even 70s foodies craved. If you want to see that episode, click here or look below for the link. In this episode, we're riffing on recipes from Rufus Estes' 1911 cookbook called Good Things to Eat. Captain Estes, as he was known, cooked for the premier class cars of Pullman trains. This was equivalent to ultra first class today. The most expensive rail car of that time was $20,000. That's about $600,000 in 2020 dollars. U.S. presidents, foreign diplomats, and world-famous performers were his guests on these luxury trains, the ultra-elite of the day. It's in the kitchens of these deluxe trains that Rufus Estes honed his skills as a chef and developed many of the recipes in this book. The dishes in this book aren't written out in the way we know recipes today. Exact cooking times or temperatures are often missing, and there are many variations on a theme, a slew of dishes that are the same except for one or two ingredients. For example, beef marrow quenelles calf's liver quenelles, and chicken quenelles. You just quenelled whatever you had available when between two stops. Even though Estes was making dishes with limited ingredients and from ingredients with long shelf lives, these dishes had to be exquisite. I mean, I don't know when the last time was that I had a quenelle of anything. How about you? Estes' recipes are short and to the point, but full of flavor. Anybody who can cook for presidents with a five-line recipe is someone worth learning more about. But don't take my word for it. Make these dishes yourself and tell me what you think. Comment, like, and subscribe so I can see if these recipes resonate with you too. And make sure you hit the bell so you'll be notified of all of Wynosity's future videos. Okay, time to cook. First, I'm doing a sparkling berry shrub and cheese ramekins. Sparkling wines always go well with salty things and cheese especially. That's the combination we have here. It's classic and classy. Next is codfish hash. This dish was invented in the 1860s as a way to use up leftovers. You'll love this recipe that takes the bits and ends and turns them into a feast-worthy dish. Who doesn't love hash, especially when paired with a zippy albarino? The main event is stewed sausage with cabbage. Virtually every culture across the world makes sausages because it tastes so good. You need a way to turn scraps of meat, organs, and the like into something tasty. That's what the captain was doing here. The entree dish for this episode is a classic crowd pleaser and is paired with fruity grenache. A berry saraband is the sweet ending to this meal. Berries and cream are a lovely spring dish, creamy, a bit tart, and very appetizing. It'll be served with a lightly sweet Riesling. Plus, there are a few other yummy surprises to come, so keep watching. Okay, let's get cooking on these dishes inspired by Captain Estes. We're getting started with the shrub. It's very simple. It's just four cups of berries, three cups of sugar, and two cups of a nice vinegar. You don't want to use a harsh white vinegar. Instead, a nice white wine vinegar would be great here. All you do is add all the ingredients into a pot, bring the mixture to a boil, then reduce to a simmer for 10 minutes to infuse the berry flavor into the liquid. Once cooked, chill the shrub, and strain it. Drinking vinegar may sound strange, but think of your other favorite sweet and sour cocktails, lemon drop martinis, margaritas, or the classic whiskey sour. This is the same flavor profile, just with berries. Trust me, it's very good. This shrub is a great mixer to add to your favorite beverage. 
Today, we've got a sugar-rimmed glass that's filled with ice, mint, a few citrus twists, and a rosemary sprig. Add some wine, then finish it off with a hint of shrub and an orange slice for garnish. Doesn't that look refreshing? I think salty snacks and sparkling wine are a perfect combo. That's why I'm making cheese ramekins next. This little cheesy bite is made of eight teaspoons of butter, eight tablespoons of grated cheese. I'm using Parmesan, by the way, but you can use any hard cheese you have. One cup of breadcrumbs, that's four slices. One cup of milk and four egg whites. And you need a bit of seasoning. I have some salt, pepper, and a little bit of fresh thyme. Just mix all of this up and pour into greased ramekins. Bake it at 350 degrees for 15 minutes. Now all there is to do is plate. I'm just gonna add some cheese to the top and torch it. If you don't have a torch, you can use the broiler. That looks like something I'd like to dig into. What about you? So our first pairing is a sparkling wine pairing. This is a 2018 Petalent Natural of Malvasia Bianca from Sonoma County, California. It's a lightly sparkling wine that was bottled without removing the yeast cells, so it's got the citrus flavor you'd expect from a sparkling wine. I think it tastes like grapefruit. It's also got a slight nuttiness from the yeast and a light fizz. It's a great springtime wine overall, and we've added a bit of berry shrub to it, which brightens it even more. Let's see what my friends think about the wine, the wine cocktail, and the pairing with the cheese ramekins. I like this. Do you like it? Yeah. Now this is something I could drink a lot of, I think. Really? <laughs> nice and um, smooth. It's not a very opinionated. Okay. Oh my God, That's it's so strange. good. It's I, good just, right? I just tasted it. It's so yummy. That's really good by itself, yeah. Yeah. Okay, course one complete. The next dish I'm making is a codfish hash. It's got all of the things that make hash great. Potatoes, corn, peas, onions, capers, and lots of meaty cod. And it's very easy to make. There's a similar dish from Portugal called bacalao a gomez de sa. Just replace the butter with olives and olive oil, and you're basically there. But today, we need butter. First, put the eggs in cold water and bring the water to a boil. After it reaches a boil, turn off the heat and let the eggs cook for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, replace the hot water with cold water to stop the eggs from cooking. While the egg is cooking, boil the cod in salted water until it's done, about 12 to 15 minutes. Then you swap out the hot water for cold so that the fish doesn't overcook. While the cod is cooking, you prepare the rest of the ingredients. First, you saute the onions and the garlic, then add the vegetables and potatoes to cook until tender and a bit crispy. The crispy bits are the best part of the hash, don't you think? We're off to a good start here. Now it's time to complete the dish. After everything is cooked, mix the cod into the vegetables, but be careful not to break up the cod too much. You still want nice chunks that you can bite into. Then garnish with chopped parsley, capers, and the eggs that are sliced in half. Doesn't that look great? this dish with two different Albarinos. This white wine is often paired with fish and seafood. One of these wines is a 2019 from Uruguay and the other is a 2017 from Spain, the homeland for this grape. I think this light and crisp white wine will be great with the fish. But let's see what my friends think. It's so good. This is my complaint. Mmm. <laughs> wow. Checking them off. I should have got my clipboard. Check, check. <laughs> Yay. So we're moving to the, um, that codfish hash was amazing. Thank yeah, you. that was good. That was delicious. Yeah, I, love, I like the codfish. That was really good. Thank you. Okay, fish and albarino, all set. The next dish is stewed cabbage with sausage. But it's not like the sausage and cabbage you're probably used to. We're gonna make caseless sausage from a mix of ground pork and beef and stew the cabbage in beer. 
those are the basic flavors, but you can see the rest of the ingredients on the screen. You start by mixing the ground meat with spices, eggs, breadcrumbs, and salt and pepper to taste. After everything is mixed, take two tablespoons to form a sausage. I'll have about 16 sausages when done so that each of my eight eaters gets two. There'll probably be a few more than that, but I'm saving them for myself. Fry the sausages up until crispy and brown. After the sausage is done, in the same pan with the pork drippings, saute the chopped garlic and onions. Once the onions and garlic are soft, add the chopped cabbage and the beer. Cover this and cook down until the cabbage is tender. The smell coming from this dish is amazing. Now it's time to make it look as amazing as it smells. To plate this dish, put the cabbage on the plate first, then add the sausages. Next, garnish. Did you grow up eating sausage and peppers? This variation on that dish is great because cabbage lasts a long time and you probably have ground meat in the freezer already. I've paired this dish with two different 2017 Grenaches. Grenache is an ultra fruity, medium bodied red wine. I usually get lots of strawberry from this kind of wine. One of the Grenaches is from Spain and is super fruity and fresh. It smells like strawberries and cherries. The other wine is from Santa Barbara County, California and is a bit richer than a lot of Grenaches. The winemaker said not to drink this wine until May 2020. As of taping, it's late April 2020, so I think it's okay to crack this baby open. It's got a baking spice character to me and a bit of cinnamon and a hint of cherry. Let's see what my friends think about this wine pairing. Cheers to number eight. eight. <laughs> hey, cheers. cheers. <laughs> I gotta get get myself together here. Oh, that is dry. Very dry. Number eight is very dry. Mm -hmm. I love the I love the ganache better. The, number nine. Yeah. This one. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's fruitier. Aren't they both Grenache? Yeah, They're yeah. both Grenache. One is Santa Barbara and one is Spain. I like them both for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Okay, time for something sweet. Berries are a sign of spring for me. That's why I'm making a berry saraband. It's berries with cream and fresh mint. Except my berries are frozen. I only have four strawberries in the yard right now. Don't tell anyone. It's important to start this recipe with really cold whipping cream and really cold orange juice. That'll make it easier to whip into cream. You also need four tablespoons of gelatin that have been dissolved in hot water and then chilled. Start by adding the whipping cream to the mixer. While whipping, slowly add the sugar, cream of tartar, orange juice, and orange zest. Now that you have a luscious cream, you just need to fold in the gelatin and the berries. It's very important to make sure your gelatin is room temp or just slightly cold when you add it to the cream. Also, since these berries were frozen, there's a bit of juice that we don't want. I let that wick away and add the somewhat drier berries into the cream. I don't mix it up so much that I lose the air in the cream, but I also want to get everything mixed together. Now that it's whipped, you put the mixture into a plastic lined butt pan and chill it until you serve it. This is gonna be good. Now I just have to get the thing onto a plate. This shouldn't be too hard. You just turn over the pan onto a plate. The plastic should just come right off. After removing the plastic, garnish with some spring flowers. We had some nasturtium, cilantro, and sage flowers blooming, so that's what I used. Also, I picked a sprig of mint, chopped it, and sprinkled it on top, and that's it. It's the perfect springtime dessert. Great with a slightly sweet Riesling. paired this dish with two different Rieslings that are just slightly sweet. One is a 2018 from Germany and the other is a 2017 from France. I'm expecting nice acid and maybe a few honey notes in these wines, but I don't want a wine that's too syrupy. I also wanted a wine that was sweet since this is a sweet dessert. We'll see if this is sweet enough to match the dish. Now let's see what my friends think about this wine pairing. The Riesling, oh they're both Riesling. Mm -hmm. I like the 11 with the dessert myself. That's my okay. first. Mm -hmm. I like the 11 because it's in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> the 11 doesn't taste like a Riesling. It doesn't seem sweet. No, I didn't think yeah. so either. 
It's not a sweet Riesling at no, all. No, it's not. No. So there you have it. I made five dishes inspired by Captain Rufus Estes' 1911 cookbook. I made a sparkling berry shrub, cheese ramekins, codfish hash, stewed cabbage and sausage, and for dessert, a berry saraband. I'm glad I went to the effort to create an event where my friends and I could get together. It was a little bit of work packing everything up, but now I have everything and I can just do it again next month. I also really enjoyed this meal. Even though this was fancy food for its day, it still had a comfort food quality about it. And it's very versatile. I think you could add some rice to the hash to extend it and make it the entire meal if you wanted. I mean, there's a ton of veggies in it already. Or you could add scrambled eggs instead of hard boiled ones to make it more breakfasty. I think that's what's great about these recipes. They're just a point of departure and the sky's the limit once you add your creativity. The dessert was probably my most favorite dish. The orange zest really added some spark to the cream, but I think these cheese ramekins and the berry shrub were the stars of the meal for everyone else. I've already gotten requests for these recipes. Don't worry guys, they're on the site. As for the wines, people like some wines with the food better. Others thought the wines were what I've heard in Italy called meditation wines. These are wines that you drink mindfully and really savor. In general, they thought the lighter the beverage, the more it went with the food. So the lighter Albarino and Grenache were for food. But overall, they enjoyed them all. So that was episode two of Family Meal and our wine pairings. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like and subscribe. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notified about all our upcoming episodes. And don't forget to share Family Meal with your friends. If you want these recipes, you can find them on the blog at winosity.com, where you'll find other food and wine pairings and the Winosity app, where you can keep track of the good wines you discover out in the world and get wine recommendations based on your preferences. I hope you'll join us in late May for the next episode of Family Meal. I'll be cooking recipes from Edna Lewis's 1986 cookbook. Her cooking is about turning farm-to-table country recipes into welcoming family events. That's right up our alley here at Family Meal. And it's appropriate for this time, as more people are planting gardens. And with the family at home, this is the kind of food we need to revisit. Okay, see you next time.